um, Tomiki Sensei, mm -hmm. who was big in Aikido, and he, his method was, was fantastic. Uh, I have a picture in a book of him, but he had uh, on his elbows, I mean his wrists, it looks like golf balls, mm -hmm. they're so big, the knots. Mm -hmm. And if you grabbed him or to pull him, he would just, just go like that, and you would scream, and he'd fly through the air. He would put so much pain on you and throw you. He was amazing, and his style, it was easy to learn. That was a nice thing about Tomiki Sensei. It was a very sensible method of using your feet, moving, mm -hmm. your hands, and you could really pick it up. Now, maybe it's because I already was a third degree sure. black belt, and I was a trained person, you know, I, I'm not, I, I don't telegraph, I don't, you know, like that, just think with my hands, see. And so I studied under one of his disciples, Yamada, who became really the replacement for him. And I, I trained every day for 30 days on Aikido mm -hmm. and, uh, before I came home. And I really learned a lot from that. It was, uh, it, was, it was a good experience. The evolution of Judo, once Judo got into the Olympics, changed. And the International Judo Federation, their rules. Mm -hmm. So now it is a game where certain things you get penalized, which we never had before. Um, and certain ways you can win without actually having a win, mm -hmm. which we never had before. Okay. And uh, there's a lot of video now, and monkey sees as monkey does, right? So now the players are taught grip fighting, they call it. Break off a grip. Someone grabs you, break it off, do different things. If I did that when I was in Kodakon, my friends wouldn't talk to me anymore. <laughs> it would be embarrassing. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. Even if I fought defensive, yeah. they wouldn't talk to me. Mm -hmm. uh, they also are taught to be uh, aggressive, to get your grip. So they're almost being taught, ignore your opponent just you create the thing, mm -hmm. all right? And they do a lot of, uh, it's like this drop me, see, they call it, we're not, we're now, a lot of us call it flop and drop, you know, type of thing, see. So they don't have the timing, they don't have the patience for that, they're not taught that. Mm -hmm. The better players have it, the really top ones. It's a little different, I can see it in some of their judo. But the younger ones, what's been coming up, so now that you see them come out like patty cake, they'll break away and like that and maybe grab hands and you know do things. Uh, the other, what looked very slow before was actually picking up the feeling, becoming a part of the person and exploding, real explosion. Those were powerful. And there was the throw. We had very few combinations before. The reason people do combinations, they can't make it work in the first place. So they're trying to say, if I fool them with this one, I can catch them with that one. Mm -hmm. Now there's nothing wrong with combinations and, and using them as a, more as a feint or not, what I really call a combination is basically this. You attack with a throw. If you've got another good player, they can sense and there's a chance they can block it and it'll twist their body or do something to keep from being thrown. At that point, you have a different situation. You've got your hands on him, you've got a control, you're driving him, he's going a little different way. You rotate your body and you throw him with a different direction. That's not a combination, that's from one throw to another. But what I'm saying about combinations is Fake this, do this, do this, do mm -hmm. that. So you're jumping around from Jump. one to the so other. So we're not committing a You're not committed. Exactly. See, there's no committed, committed. You know, you're trying to do it the second time or third. Mm -hmm. Now I saw in a, the last, I think it was a world championship, there was one Japanese player, he was very good at this. He went into a drop knee COI, he tried hard, boom. Mm -hmm. The other person stopped him. The referee didn't call Monte, didn't call Holder, stop. As he was rising, he hit him with another throw. And the other guy barely was getting out of it. And while he's trying to recover out of that, he hit him with a third throw. And later. 
But these were full commitments yes, yes. each time. It wasn't like da 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 to jump around, which is what I see happening. Mm. And so, because of the rules that you don't have to get an eight pound to win, you know, you can get a, a partial yes. to Billy Yuko, or you create, make the other person get penalties, make him stiff. So, this is not really the old it's way. Not it's, it's not, not judo. judo. It took the judo out of judo. Out of judo. What do you think of the future? Will Judah really start losing uh, popularity and start disappearing because of those changes? What's going to happen, you know? Because now I see Judah is losing popularity in the United States. Well, the United States is a, a unique situation. It's not the same as the rest of the world. The rest of the world became smart about Judah. They know that their customers, the new people coming in, they want self-defense. They don't want to be Olympic champions in the sport. Nobody goes into a, a sport like tennis yeah. to be a champion. You go in for recreation. Now you get into it, you like it, and maybe you're willing to commit yourself and give the time, the money, mm -hmm. and do it. All sports are like that. So how do I get new people to come mm -hmm. in? Well, they really want to know self-defense. So the French, for example, uh, it's judo and jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. Of course they do mostly judo, because the judo, straight judo, is here's like more fun. With self-defense, the downside of it, and we call it that, is that because you're learning how to injure somebody, you know, of course it's a situation you don't have to, but I mean, you're lear basically learning how to injure somebody if they do something that it has to be more cooperative. And so it's difficult to go all the way, like they have mm -hmm. the free practice. But the French do a lot of that. They do very good self-defense. And, um, and they're, in their examinations, I saw one for six-degree black belt. And the, the teachers had to do, they took one throw, did maybe 30 variations and applications, mm -hmm. maybe 12 different counters, then they did mat work. From one position, they show all kinds of things. Turnovers, arm bars, chokes, pins. They did a formal kata. And then they did remarkable self-defense. And everyone was different. It was fantastic stuff. Um, the French are very good, like in a throw. They'll throw you, and while you're in the air, they go into an arm bar. I mean, some really nice stuff. But they're... But France is very sophisticated in judo. They have maybe half a million people to a million people doing it. Yeah. In America, we have 30,000. It started with the Japanese on the West Coast, mostly, which were very conservative. Most of them were ex-farmers immigrated from Japan. Their judo skills were limited. See. And they, didn't, they, they thought that professionalism, to pay money for teachers, was a no-no. Mm -hmm. And so, and they really didn't know the self-defense. Some did, not all. And so the marketing of judo has been very poor. Now recently, the mixed martial arts, the world is interested in knowing a lot of things. But like Osawa, I just have to relate the story to you. I was in Japan and he was gonna take me to dinner. He asked me what I wanted to eat. He said, I would like tempura. While we're in a taxi, he says, I think if you do judo, just do judo. If you do aikido, just do aikido. Okay? Mm -hmm. You do karate, do karate. Now, eating is the same thing. If you want sushi, go to a sushi restaurant. If you want tempura, go to a tempura <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, doing everything, I don't know. You're not really learning anything. Not, you just a little sample, but you never become a specialist or exactly. learning. Yeah. Like I see some of the mixed martial art things on television, and the people are boxing or hitting. I can tell who understands boxing and who doesn't. He's just what I call Marianne stuff. He's swimming, swinging, but he really does. He or she doesn't understand how to really hit and box. Um, so what is happening now, though, is the judo is coming through. Judo, ex-judo champions that are going into mixed martial arts 
or winning. And so Judo is getting a reputation. Mm -hmm. And Jiu Jitsu. Okay? It's almost the same. So I can't say, you know. As the, there's three national organizations, and they issued a paper where do we want to go in Judo? And they all said we should do self defense. The problem is nobody's doing the self defense, only a few. Yes. yes. Because they go to the dojo and they have this routine. And they're always going to the local tournaments, and so they just train for that. And it's what in Japanese, the judo kichigaya. Kichigaya it means crazy. Okay, so they're, 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 I mean, they're not judo, I mean, they're shiai kichigaya. It's a tournament, crazy. All they see is that tournament, and that's the only payoff they're looking at. And they enjoy it, and it's fun. But it doesn't market things. Now, if they want to give a judo demonstration, say you want to show the public your judo. What do they do? It's called, a friend of mine called it circus. <laughs> you know, you go to the circus and you see the people do all this stuff. Yes, yes. And you enjoy it. Yes. But you don't go home and do it. You know. No. Okay? So what they do, boom, they're showing these throws like this and that. Everybody enjoys it. But nobody's going to want to do it. See? So you have to, you don't want to frighten the people. You need something where people will say, hey, I think I can, I can do, do it. This. That's the biggest problem. They're not reaching to the people. They're not reaching the people. They're chasing them away. Yes.